This scruffy man had recently gone through a divorce, and his good buddies decided to help him get over the aftermath by leaving their wives behind and taking Vince to Mikey's grandmother's house for a vacation. The minibus was halfway on the road when it was blocked by several decaying goats. However, none of the burly men dared to approach them. It was the female driver who took the initiative to move the goats aside. Just then, Vince's phone started ringing, and he answered the call. Soon after, everyone else's phone started ringing as well. Neil, realizing the situation, confiscated all their phones. They resumed their journey and soon arrived at the small town where Mikey's grandmother lived. They went to a tavern, ready to have a party with good wine and beautiful women. However, the tavern was completely empty. Mikey went to his grandmother's house and found a key under a porcelain doll in the corner of the wall. He also noticed a bloody handprint on the wall, subsequently found. The sight of this frightened Mikey and he turned his head and ran. At that moment, the rest of the group saw a limping figure in black walking down the street. He looked like a homeless person, so they prepared to give him some spare change. Just as they were reaching into their pockets, a man suddenly rushed out and tackled the person in black, landing a couple of punches. Then, he pulled out a knife, ready to deliver a fatal blow. Vince quickly intervened upon seeing this, rushing forward to stop the man. The others followed suit and punched and kicked the man. However, in the midst of the scuffle, the fallen person in black grabbed a knife from the ground and lunged at Neil, stabbing him in the palm of his hand. Then, he lunged at the remaining few people with his knife. Suddenly, Mikey appeared out of nowhere and smashed a porcelain doll on the head of the person in black, lifting the hat to find out it's a zombie. At the same time, the zombie bride also chased after them, and various strange-looking zombies appeared around them. The group hastily ran towards bus, intending to escape from the area, only to discover that the female driver had also turned into a zombie. They had no choice but to seek refuge at Mikey's grandmother's house. Finally arriving at the doorstep, Mikey struggled to find the keys in his pocket due to having too many items. By this time, the zombies had already closed in, but several strong men fought back with plastic buckets. Eventually, Mikey managed to find the keys, and the group rushed inside. Surprisingly, the zombies ceased their attack. Inside the house, the group discussed their strategies. Mikey complained to Neil for taking away his phone, leaving them unable to contact the outside world. Vince suspected that there was a virus in the air, which explained why the female driver had mutated. While they were engaged in conversation, the unconscious soldier woke up. The group interrogated the soldier, demanding to know why all the women outside had turned into zombies and where the men in the town had gone. However, the soldier remained tight-lipped. Even when faced with further intimidation, he revealed that he was sent by his superiors to hunt down these female zombies. But he didn't disclose any specific details about the situation. After deliberation, the group concluded that their only escape route was to return by the same bus they had arrived in. So, the six strong men armed themselves with an iron rod and cautiously approached the bus. They planned for Neil to distract the driver. True to his charismatic nature, Neil successfully lured the driver away, allowing the rest of the group to quickly board the bus. However, just as they inserted the car keys, two zombies suddenly emerged from the back seats. Terrified, they scrambled out of the bus as fast as they could. Patrick, in his haste to retrieve the bag containing the phone, ended up being left behind. In a desperate attempt to save himself, Patrick climbed onto a nearby billboard but accidentally got his leg struck by the axe of the zombie bride. Having narrowly escaped, Patrick realized that the bag contained a golf set instead of a phone. On the other side, the remaining group members had not run far before they were surrounded by zombies. It was then that Mikey recognized his ex-girlfriend among the zombies. Just as Mikey was catching up with his ex-girlfriend, a gigantic zombie wielding a sword charged towards them, plunging the scene into chaos. Meanwhile, Vince is busy rescuing Mickey and Matt is in a battle of wits with a zombie dentist. In a critical moment, a golf ball struck the dentist zombie's prominent front tooth. This was fired by Patrick from a great distance. Simultaneously, Neil had just managed to elude the pursuing driver. Neil kicks an old lady zombie with a football and then hides in a side room. However, Neil's moment of relief was short-lived as he was swiftly knocked unconscious by a frying pan, wielded by an unknown person. On the other side, Vince and Matt took refuge in a toy store and used a toy car to deliver a walkie-talkie to Mikey and the others hiding in a clothing store. After discussing how to fight back, Graham placed a mannequin head on the toy car to attract the attention of the zombies while Mikey attempted to smash the armored car's window with bricks. To Mikey's frustration, the glass turned out to be bulletproof. In a fit of anger, Mikey kicked the car, 
triggering its alarm and quickly drawing the attention of the female zombies. Mikey hastily sought shelter in a nearby store. Meanwhile, Neil was enjoying a romantic candlelit dinner with a female zombie. The zombie cut off Neil's finger with a chainsaw and proceeded to dip it in some butter before eating it. Just as the zombie was about to reach for another finger, Neil seized the opportunity, grabbed the chainsaw, and plunged it into the zombie's neck. On the other side Mikey heard a noise coming from the shop and lifted the curtain. Mikey is preparing to leave quietly, suddenly. Vince's voice came through the walkie-talkie, catching the attention of the female butcher, in the next second. Vince learned from the walkie-talkie that Mikey was trapped. He quickly informed Matt and armed themselves with homemade flamethrowers, preparing to go for the rescue. As they opened the door, a sword-wielding female zombie lunged at them. The female zombie transformed into a blazing fireball and fled in the distance, however, the makeshift flamethrowers, lacking proper certification, caught fire entirely. Matt panicked and dropped the weapon, which coincidentally landed on a pool of gasoline on the ground. As the flames burn, Mikey managed to escape from the butcher's grip and ran back to the clothing store. Meanwhile, Matt and Vince found themselves in a dire situation. They then found a church. They found a lab in the church. So someone must be working on the zombie virus here. On the other side, Mikey and the others dressed in women's clothing, adopting a seductive walk as they left the clothing store. As expected, the zombies only attacked men and paid no attention to them in their feminine guise. Meanwhile, with the relentless efforts of the zombie bride, the billboard was finally brought down. Patrick landed on the ground but luckily found a golf club which he used to deliver a powerful blow to the zombie bride. Finally, the group reunited in the church. Vince, who had seen the laboratory, suspected that the soldier was withholding information and wanted to confront him. <laughs> Meanwhile, Neil hit on the rooftop and spotted the group below. <laughs> Neil scrambles to get free. The people flee to the house. At that moment, Matt fixed a nearby computer and a woman appeared on the screen, constantly complaining about something. It seemed that the zombie events in the town were related to the military's Project Cat House. Before a few people could ask questions, the other party hung up the video call without mercy. The soldier then informed them that the zombies outside were about to enter the second stage of evolution. They would become smarter and more agile in their movements. Just as he finished speaking, the zombies began pounding on the door. Fortunately, the soldier had a secret weapon, they had installed sonar emitters around the town, capable of temporarily controlling the frenzied zombies outside. The soldier pressed the switch, but it had no effect. Now they were completely doomed. At that moment, the soldier suddenly coughed up blood and collapsed to the ground. A zombie old lady wielding a pair of scissors appeared behind him. Mikey immediately recognized her as his grandmother, just as Mikey was about to urge the others not to harm her. Matt swiftly swung a golf club and turned the zombie grandmother into a pile of pieces. Feeling guilty for killing Mikey's grandmother, Matt went to the neighboring room to confess. Vince, intending to console Matt. With a heavy heart, Vince walked out slowly and casually closed the door behind him. Vince informed everyone that Matt had passed away. At the same time, the charred female zombie emerged from it, with tears in their eyes. The few remaining men unleashed their inner strength and battled the zombies fiercely. With their cooperation, Mikey delivered a fatal blow, sending the female zombie to the afterlife. Meanwhile, the female zombies from outside the church also stormed in, forcing the group to seek refuge on the second floor of the building. Just then, Banksy, who had arrived late to the town, casually drank his soda, completely unaware of what had happened. As Vince and the others climbed out from the roof of the church, Banksy happened upon them. Neil urgently asked Banksy to bring a ladder, just as the group was climbing down. The female butcher arrived and shook the ladder violently. Mikey and Banksy fell onto the roof of the adjacent building. They quickly set up the ladder to allow the others to climb across. As Graham was halfway through climbing, the female zombie who had followed them knocked the ladder over. Another person was lost. The few remaining men had no time to linger and soon followed Banksy to where he had parked his car. To their surprise, Banksy's car turned out to be a two-seater. Vince was not happy on the spot. Banksy arrived so late and drove a two-seater car that didn't fit so many people. Desperate and in a state of argument, Patrick attempted to mediate but was attacked by a zombie before he could finish speaking. Seeing the situation, 
Vince and the others hurriedly fled towards the bus. Just as they confronted the driver, the zombies attacked Banksy as well. In the end, only Mikey, Neil, and Vince managed to escape onto the bus. However, Vince, who had just gone through a divorce, did not drive the bus. Instead, he gave an impassioned speech about how this vacation trip was meaningful and that there was no obstacle they couldn't overcome as long as they were alive. He then burned a photo of his ex-wife before slamming the gas pedal, crashing through the female zombies and creating a path of blood. The three of them drove the blood-soaked bus out of the crazy town. However, Graham's voice came through the walkie-talkie, revealing that he hadn't died. He had been thrown into a pile of corpses by the zombies. Without hesitation, the three turned the bus around, ready to rescue Graham and take him home. As they faced the approaching zombies in the distance, they picked up their golf clubs, preparing for a big battle. Suddenly, the zombies froze in place, unable to move. But then Graham came out trembling. It turned out he had repaired the sonar controller and released the sonar waves to control the zombies. Neil, being daring, started playing with the zombies. As the controller was smashed, the zombies resumed their attack. The group hurriedly pushed Graham, laughing heartily as they fled into the distance.